The late 1960s and early 1970s were marked by social upheaval. But amidst the cultural shifts and protests, a more sinister force emerged in Northern California. A mysterious and unidentified serial killer, known only as the Zodiac, cast a long shadow over the region, leaving a trail of terror, cryptic messages, and unsolved murders that have perplexed investigators and captivated the public for decades. In the quiet town of Vallejo, California, on the cold night of December 20, 1968, the Zodiac Killer claimed his first known victims. David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, a young couple enjoying an evening together, became unwitting victims of a brutal and senseless attack. This chilling event marked the beginning of a reign of terror that would haunt the collective consciousness of Northern California. The Zodiac, a shadowy figure operating in the cover of darkness, left no concrete clues at the crime scene, only the eerie silence of an unsolved murder. It was a harbinger of the dark days that lay ahead for the communities in the region. What set the Zodiac Killer apart was not just the acts of violence, but the calculated and brazen communication with the media and authorities that followed. Letters, often accompanied by cryptic ciphers, were sent to local newspapers and police departments. Each missive filled with a disturbing desire for notoriety. One of the first letters arrived on July 31, 1969, at the Vallejo Times Herald. In it, the Zodiac claimed responsibility for the murders of Faraday and Jensen, providing details only the killer would know. The letter also contained a cryptogram, a puzzle challenging the police to decipher the hidden message within. This marked the beginning of the mysterious killer's correspondence, a dark dialogue with law enforcement and the public. The following year, on July 4, 1969, the Zodiac struck again in Vallejo, targeting Darlene Farron and Michael Majot. In a lover's lane scenario, the couple became victims of another brutal attack. Farron lost her life, and Majot was left critically injured. It was a chilling replication of the modus operandi seen in the previous murders. What made the Zodiac's crimes even more disturbing was the clear escalation of violence. The killer seemed emboldened, crossing new thresholds of brutality with each attack. The letter that followed this murder contained the infamous phrase, I like killing people because it is so much fun. The Zodiac's penchant for Theatrix reached a macabre zenith on September 27, 1969, when he attacked Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard at Lake Berryessa. Wearing a hood with a cross circle symbol, the Zodiac stabbed the couple, leaving them for dead. Shepard succumbed to her injuries, but Hartnell miraculously survived. What set this attack apart was not just the brutality of the stabbing but the deliberate nature of the Zodiac's actions. He left a message, a frightening precursor to his future plans. The Zodiac's correspondence became increasingly intricate, laced with references to movies and an apparent desire for infamy. The Zodiac's final confirmed murder occurred on October 11, 1969, in San Francisco. Paul Stein, a cab driver became the unwitting victim of a fair gone wrong. The murder was witnessed by three teenagers who managed to provide a description of the suspect. The brazen nature of the attack, coupled with the Zodiac's ability to elude capture, raised the stakes for law enforcement. It seemed as though the Zodiac was always one step ahead, leaving behind a wake of fear and bewilderment. Central to the Zodiac mystery were the cryptograms, puzzles, and ciphers that the killer sent in his letters. Challenging investigators and amateur codebreakers alike, the Zodiac claimed that his identity was hidden within these cryptic messages, adding an extra layer of complexity to an already baffling case. While some of the cryptograms were solved, others remained inscrutable. The Zodiac's communication style was a unique blend of arrogance, cryptic wit, and a disturbing understanding of the impact his actions were having on society. Each letter seemed to be a chess move in a game only the Zodiac understood. 
The Zodiac's reign of terror presented an unprecedented challenge for law enforcement. The killer seemed to defy the conventional understanding of criminal behavior, operating on a plane of chaos and unpredictability. Eyewitness accounts provided investigators with enough information to create composite sketches of the Zodiac. The Lake Berryessa survivor's description, in particular, led to a police artist's rendering. But despite these efforts, the elusive killer managed to slip away. Despite numerous leads and the collaboration of multiple law enforcement agencies, the Zodiac's identity remained elusive. The lack of a clear motive, coupled with the randomness of the attacks, confounded investigators. Theories and speculation swirled, but the concrete evidence needed to unmask the Zodiac remained frustratingly out of reach. Over the years, a plethora of theories and suspects have emerged, each offering a glimpse into the elusive identity of the Zodiac. Some theories suggest that the killer may have been a disturbed loner seeking attention, while others explore the possibility of multiple perpetrators or connections to other high-profile crimes of the era. One of the most prominent suspects was Arthur Lee Allen, a Vallejo schoolteacher who had a troubled past. Allen's connection to the case was explored extensively, but, despite circumstantial evidence and a thorough investigation, he was never definitively linked to the crimes. Several other names have surfaced over the years, each with its own set of intriguing circumstances. However, none of these leads have provided the smoking gun needed to close the case definitively. The legacy of the Zodiac Killer endures as one of the most captivating and unsettling chapters in true crime history. Books, documentaries, and films have explored the case, contributing to its lasting fascination. The killer's identity remains a subject of intense speculation and amateur sleuthing. With online communities dedicated to unraveling the mystery, despite advancements in forensic technology, the Zodiac Killer has never been definitively identified or apprehended. The case remains open, haunting the collective memory of those who lived. Through that era and captivating new generations of true crime enthusiasts. In conclusion, the Zodiac Killer's reign of terror left an indelible mark on the history of criminal investigations. The unsolved nature of the case, the cryptic communications, and the brutality of the murders continue to make the Zodiac Killer a subject of intense public interest and debate. The hope for closure and justice persists, making the Zodiac Killer a haunting figure in the annals of true crime, a phantom menace whose identity remains shrouded in the shadows of uncertainty.